Okay, time to work on the CB650. I've been putting it off for, I think, three months now. <laughs> Close to it. But I've been busy. Uh, I'm not even showing you videos of the stuff I've been doing, but helping the grandkids, doing all kinds of stuff. Changing struts, ball joints, links, tires, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, let's strip this uh, six, with the 650 Honda here. I want to uh, get the carbs off. They're, they're all gummed up. And I'll do a compression check. And uh, we'll take it from there. And I, I, I got a new uh, toy in the garage here that I'll show you we're going to use on these carbs. So let's get her apart. In this air box <clears throat> there's one uh, bolt right here 10 mil there's another one right here there might be more but I'm pretty sure that's part of the box yeah I think he's going to make this into a rat rod and he's probably not going to put the air box back on. That's what he wanted to do. So, makes it a lot easier for getting the carbs in and out to at least loosen it off. I should have put this bike over there. I'm going to have to do something with that. It's even got a intermediate rubber boot between the this piece and this piece huh let's see if it goes back yeah it's going back a bit It'd be better if the air if the battery box was out of there but I don't know if I want to get that far that's coming out there Okay, let's go to the other side. So it's coming off here. I'm prying it against the, the screws there so there's no... There we go, it's off. These boots are probably hard as a rock. I might have to heat them up to get them off. And then I'll worry about the cable. Oh yeah, those are on, hard as a rock. Oh yeah, I gotta have to heat those up. up the rubbers I'm not prying on the engine just prying here I got that one side to pop Mm-hmm. 
here. I could have undone the choke cable from over there. There's that. This one still has all the original drain tubes on it, which is unusual for a bike that's 43 years old. Carbs are off. There's my new tool. Ultrasonic, ultrasonic cleaner, six liter. So we're gonna use that to clean the carbs up on this one. Okay. Before I go any further on the carbs, I'm gonna do a compression check on these cylinders. This bike's obviously sat for a few decades. So uh, I'll pull the plugs out. Doesn't look too bad. Not too bad. <clears throat> okay. Got a battery hooked up. I don't have the key. So I'm just shorting the solenoid and uh, I want this to get broken. So just like this, like this, like this, like that. Okay. Come on. Right there. It's upside down. So we need it to get down to here. Well, that's 125. See if we can get it down to there. That's about 140, it was about 145. She's leaking down, might be my tool, which it is. This little valve here is leaking. That's pretty good. Let's see what this one is. These old bikes last forever. Hard to kill him. Okay, let's see what number two is. That one 
kind of sounded like a bell stuck. Got up over 100, 110. That was kind of weird. It was it was doing good chugging, and then it stopped like a bell stuck on. Yeah, like there's no compression there now. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's like a valve stuck on that one. <laughs> probably just get it running with some oil flow, it'll probably be all right. Because now I'm only getting like uh, 25 pounds on there. Probably the valve stem's a little rusty and it's stuck open. A little gummy. Number three. Where you can see it at least. There. Need to get it down here, 125, 150. Not quite 125. 120-ish. I just suspect uh, dirty valves. Let me try one more. Forty-five. So I think they're all good. I think we we'll just get it running with some oil flow, and uh, that'll come back. If I get it running, if this head gasket's leaking at all, I'm going to pull the head off if he wants to, and I can clean those valves. But I think with a little bit of running and lubrication, that'll that'll. Uh, up. Okay, let's pull these carbs apart, see what we got. Now this, this carb here, number two, has an enrichner plunger in it, like a Harley. <laughs> like a accelerator pump. One, one and a half, and a bit, one and a half and a bit. I think I, f I think I fucked that one up. It's number three. It's one and a half plus a bit, and this one was the same thing. One and a half plus. I'm going to say 10 degrees. This was probably plus 5 degrees. Half. 
half, one, one and a half, and a little bit. <laughs> Pop the floats out. Just tap in here a little bit. Number four. Number three. I was really hoping there's going to be an idle circuit jet I could take out, but this is pressed in. This here, I don't know if that's the idle circuit jet or pickup tube. Because that's pressed in. This fits in there. It's way too big for an idle circuit. Come on. Oh, this crap out of the way. I'm just trying to figure out the uh, circuitry, like where the uh, idle circuit jet ports come out. These are air jets here. Like this typically would be your idle circuit jet, but it's it's pressed in. I'm gonna to have to read up about this carb, see if I can find some information on this carb. I got glasses on. Nothing blowing through there. Okay. okay, back on the carbs off the CB650. I threw the floats in here as well too. 
all the needles and seats. I'm just, this is that ultrasonic cleaner. I've watched a bunch of videos. And a lot of guys, um, if you put your parts in here just the way you buy it like this, then you get a grease and slime and build up all in your tank. You gotta clean it every single time. So what everybody's doing is they're putting them in uh, either glass or uh, plastic containers. I'm gonna try this plastic container here. And uh, I probably could put it in a glass jar. I might try that the next time. I'm just gonna see how this works. And then I used on just Dawn dish soap. I'm just gonna try that. Some guys use gasoline in there, diesel fuel, carb cleaner. I'm just gonna try something that's, uh, I'm gonna throw the float bowls in there too. I'm gonna have to do two batches. And I'm just gonna do this for 15 minutes. Let me get that really tight first. And then uh, I'll put it in here. I'm not gonna put the heat element on. I'm gonna try it just in the cold water, just the agitation and see what's going on. Otherwise I have to let this sit for probably half hour, an hour and get it, get it really hot in there. And then that hot has to transfer into here. So I'm gonna leave the heat element off and just use the timer for 15 minutes, see what happens. Okay, let me tighten this up here. Okay, the other thing is too, I just poured, I have a jug of one gallon of distilled water. This is a six liter um, ultrasonic cleaner, cleaner, this one here. Pretty sure it was a six liter one. And uh, one gallon filled it right up to the brim right there. And I guess you're supposed to run these things full don't run it half full or quarter empty you can damage them i guess so i hope this isn't going to overfill it nope so uh maybe i should have had some a little bit more water near to the but i wanted to leave some gap in there <laughs> i'm sure that'll bounce around let's see what happens maybe i'll get a line right across it where it's not clean maybe this will hold it down yeah that'll help Anyway, let's try that. There's 15 minutes. No, there's 15 minutes. I don't know if that's going to do anything or not. So the ultrasound is supposed to go right through that plastic container, work the same way without dirty, without dirty in your tanks. So let me try that. I still haven't found out if that's a pilot jet pressed in, which I suspect it is. I was trying to get the manual. The owner does have the manual, but I haven't been able to reach him. So uh, these carbs aren't that bad. I'm really surprised. So they're not that bad. Be nice to strip it right down and put the whole carb in there, but these ones aren't too bad, so let's see what happens. Okay, we'll come back in 15 minutes. Okay, let's see what we got. Let me dump this water out. These parts in that. Let me dump this water out. <laughs> Hope that wasn't one of those little washers. I don't know, I thought I felt something fall. <clears throat> oh, I hope I didn't lose something. Anyways, <laughs> there's before, there's after. 
Not much difference with just Dawn soap. It did clean it a bit. And that was 15 minutes. Same with the main jet. That's still dirty. Okay. I'm going to put a cleaner in there, but I don't want to put a, a cleaner on the floats. I know they withstand gasoline, but I don't normally clean floats. They're normally all right. The only thing that can get plugged or a little bit gummy is the, uh, uh, the passageway for the uh, fulcrum pin. So I'm going to take the floats out. There's what they looked like before. And that's after. So they are a little cleaner. I'm gonna put these back in there. And now I could put gasoline in there or I've got that carb cleaner stuff, but uh, you're not supposed to agitate it. So, <laughs> I don't know, it might expand, I don't know. This stuff here, Chem Dip Carb Parts Cleaner. I got this stuff too, I could pour that in there. Deep cleans. I feel safer using this. Good way to see if this stuff really works. This stuff was on sale, I got it pretty cheap. I think I got it for two for the price of one. I was using it in my avalanche. I'm gonna give that 30 minutes this time. See what that does. Okay, round two. Didn't blow up. Maybe it did, it's all, yeah, it leaked out. It leaked out, so. It's a bit of a film in there too, so and now I do gotta clean it out. Now let's see if it was worth it. Nope. A little bit cleaner, not good enough. I probably should have used that carb cleaner. Okay, so I pretty much wasted this. Let me uh, dump that into something here. So, This is that uh, Tecron complete fuel system cleaner, supposed to clean your injectors, your intake, everything. And 
and I just had it in an agitator, ultrasonic for 30 minutes, and it didn't even take the varnish off this aluminum. We'll see how it did with the jets. That one was at the bottom, so it looks a little cleaner. The jets are still, like to me, this should be just shiny copper. This should be shiny brass. If it's clean properly, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna use the carb cleaner. stuff's amazing for removing carbon absolutely amazing the parts come out like brand new if they're carbon up like valve springs and valves like I'll buy another jug of this if I got to decarbon an engine but it says carb cleaner on it I've never had much luck just soaking the carb in it but See what it does. This is pretty dirty already. Pretty corrosive. I'm going to do 20 minutes. Round three. Get some gloves on. I expect this should be cleaner. I hope it's card cleaner. couple of videos ago I, I rebuilt the uh, top end of my avalanche there so the video was probably a few months ago and I was blown away how that decarbonized the top of that engine this Kim dip carburetor parts cleaner it's amazing for carbon but I don't think I don't think so good for this but let's see oh it looks a lot better Okay, let's see how this goes.
There we go. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to buy a new can of this because I've had that one for, I don't know, three or four years. But uh, let's see. This one was the cleanest of the bunch. I didn't even clean it. But uh, now you can see the difference. Now it's cleaned it up. That's cleaner. It's a lot better. It's starting to get shiny. But you still need to wipe it off here. It's a lot better. So that was 20 minutes. So I think I've had a clean batch of that stuff and put it in for 30 minutes. And then maybe it says maximum 100 degrees, so maybe turn it up to uh, 80 degrees or something like that. It's pretty cold in here. Well, you can see that's that's much cleaner, much cleaner. That's about how it was before and after. And this one's this one was the cleanest. These ones were really dirty. Okay, so I think I'll just uh, wash all this stuff off, wipe it off, and uh, still try to find out about that pilot, if it's pressed in there, if I can heat it up and pull them out, or uh, try to clean it the way it is. Okay. I've been studying this carb a little bit, and I did find a owner's manual, digital, uh, PDF orders, owner's manual online and it's really good actually it's really detailed and uh, this is a pressed a pressed in idle circuit jet and this screw right here is a mixture screw not uh, an air screw like is on a lot of the newer models after this most of them just adjust the air this one adjusts the air and fuel. It's called a mixture screw. And usually the idle circuit um, jet, or idle jet, is so fine, you know, just a very fine piece of wire is gonna, is gonna get into there. This is actually even, would be too thick. But this one has a little bit larger hole in it. I'll show you, I'm using a, a welding tip cleaner and because I thought, well, if that's a really fine little hair hole in there, I'm going to have to pull these jets out and clean them out or somehow get them out. But it's actually a pretty good size hole in there. And then it's metered by this. So it's less likely for that to plug up. Or if it does, it's a little easier to clean out with one of these. So I can stick this in and I hit a ridge. I'm hitting a ridge about that far in. And then if I wiggle it around in the right spot, It'll drop. Make a liar out of me. Come on. There. It's bottomed out there. I'll put my finger on it. it goes, see how much farther it goes down? It goes down a quarter inch farther. And it's clear. They're all clear. So that's good. That's a good sign. And uh, maybe what I'll try to do is squirt some uh, my brake cleaner, car cleaner into here and see if it'll, if it'll come back out of there. Just to make sure they're all clear that way. I tried spraying into this hole here, but it just sprays everywhere. So it might be easier to do it this way. Let me try that. <laughs> it might squirt right onto my lens there. Let me get a rag here. Well, the only other place it can go is uh, into the throttle body. Oh, I don't want 
about to go into my cord string. Try it in reverse on this one. Not really seeing it. Not really seeing it. I think it's just coming out into the throttle body. That one goes into the main jet. What's this one do here? What's this one do here? So these three holes here, the, the air bleed holes, that first one there, this first one is goes feeds the main jet, the emulsion tube. This one goes up right to the idle circuit jet, so it starts. It was starting to come out of uh, out of here. I'm going to assume they're all clear. The carb wasn't really gummed up; it was just dirty. So I'm going to put it back together. The other thing they want to do, I guess they want to make it into a bobber, so I'm going to get rid of the air box. It's a two-piece air box. I just pried it apart because it's got the wrong screw in there. Take that out. There's the drain hose. I'm going to clean this up in here. I think before I put the carbs on, I'll clean this up a little bit. Oh, these are hard as a rock. That's old rubber. I gotta heat them up to get them in there. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. I just got the cable loop back in there and I'm just going to take the free play out. There's a little bit too much free play. A little bit. I, I always do the, the pull cable first and then the return cable last. The, once you get the pull one set, you don't want the return one to interfere with that free play at all. Okay, it's supposed to be about an eighth of an inch. That's about it there, so now I can tighten up the bottom one, I hope.
and the mixture screws on the carb are one and five eighths of a turn. Okay, so now I'll stick this one in. This one goes over the top. Stick it into the slot here first. I don't think you guys can see on there, but. And then into the cable slot. Like that. I to get at that one on the other side. Okay, about a week later again, I'm going to, um, I think put the fuel tank on. Uh, I'm gonna check it first, make sure it smells good. I finally got the key so I can open up the tank and uh, turn the ignition on, see if I got spark. I could have pulled off the ignition wire from in here, but it's all, uh, I don't know if you can see it up in there, but it's all taped up. It's all taped up, so I don't want to disturb that. Um, I'll also crank it over, see if I got spark. And uh, uh, I'm sure the compression is going to come back. I'm sure that's just dirty valve seats. So first thing, let me check the fuel tank there and see if it smells decent or if I've got to put my reserve tank on. belt's just about done it's off of the uh off of the cadet tractor there hopefully there's a part number on it doesn't look like it mm, it smells not too bad To do a taste test though. Down here. Okay, let me see if I got spark next though. Well, I'll put you up here. You want the, uh, where are you there? Down here, down here. You want the spark plug um, to ground. So you gotta get that on metal. Get them both touching metal there. Can you see those two there? All right, let's see if we got spark. And hook the battery up. Neutral. Spark there. Oh yeah, we got pretty good spark. Okay, we just connect the battery.
Okay. Gonna put the plugs in and uh, put the fuel tank on. Turn the fuel on, see if uh, we got a leak. Okay, only straight up and down. Yep, got a leak already. I just kind of want to get the other ones filled up and then run it and hopefully that'll clean it out so uh, put this thing on here and then raise this up Leaking. Hopefully, all the float bowls filled up, and uh, this one here, number one cylinder, is leaking. Needle stuck open. I can probably get at it from here, but I'm, what I'm going to do is just leave the gas off. Hopefully, the float bowls are full. Pull the choke on, and just see if this thing's going to fire up. And maybe that'll clean, get the float going.
Oh, I forgot this thing's got a, a fuel pump built into the throttle. I just pulled this spark plug out as well on the other side, <clears throat> one and four, and they're a little oily from the penetrating oil that I sprayed in there to try to free up the valves. So I just wiped them off. I checked the float balls uh, with the, sc the screw, the drain screw on all four of them, and they all got fuel, so that's good. I, I need to uh, give it more chokes. I'm gonna use my hand. It almost fired up there a couple times. So uh, let's see if it goes now. Okay, we tried again. I took that number three plug out, cleaned it up a little bit. Let's see if it's going to go. I think I'm going to richen up the uh, the mixture screw on those carbs <clears throat> because I'm running with no air pods and without the air filter on, he wants to put pods on it. So I'm just going to turn them out a quarter of a turn each. That'll help it out a little better. gonna need a carb kit. The float bowl gaskets are weeping a bit on the other side. I think they are here. I kind of figured that but I hope I just get it running and then I'm gonna give them a list of everything it needs. So let's try that. not running a number three <laughs> at least not very good
Yeah, it's kind of stuck bell, so I'm trying to free it up. <laughs> it's, it's just not my bike. You played the money for the road? Yeah, he was. Uh, there's only seven of us that are. I don't think it ever fully got hot at all, this cylinder. Maybe a little bit. It was firing a little bit. Number three. And uh, carb's got to be rebuilt. I got to get a rebuilt kit for them. That's the first thing. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be a valve. I'm going to pull the force, pull the tank off, pull the uh, four spark plugs out, and do another compression test, and just see if the compression came up in that one because that was one of the ones that had no compression. From uh, I think it, hopefully it's not a bent valve, but I revved the hell out of it there too, trying to get it freed up, and it did kind of you hear once you pop 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 kick in every once in a while, so. Let's do that, pull the tank off and, and the plugs out. Oop. Okay, there's the per, I got, I'm just doing cylinder number three to start with. It's gotta come down to here. Right at the bottom over here. There, it's gotta go down to here, 125 to 150. And there, I'm not gonna use the key to start it because I don't want it sparking and gas and on the engine down here, so I'm just gonna short the cylinder. No compression in that cylinder, that's why it's not firing. Crazy. Not good. I'll do a compression check on number one just to see the difference here. One and two. I'm doing number four first. Got up to like 120. It's leaking down. Thought it'd be better than that. Let's see what number one is. I think this head's got to come off. Okay, got to get her down to here. Fuck, I'm only getting a. Uh, 80 pounds. It's no wonder it's, it was hard to get it running because it's it's not, uh... well, the other things too I could do before I go any farther is loosen up all those valves. I'm gonna do the compression check on number two first. Is it still recording? Yep, okay, number two. Okay, I got all the valve covers off. Um, I don't feel play in any of them. Like I know some of them aren't under compression, but usually you find a couple loose ones I can play with. And uh, I took the timing cover off that side there and I'm all ready to put a socket on it. To check the valve clearances. I'm just gonna go see what they are. I'm gonna I'm, taking, I'm gonna take a guess here. 2000, 4000, I haven't checked yet. Just from memory from 40 years ago, but I'm probably wrong. But um, uh, what else? Yeah, I got my the gas tank over here and I got it shut off. But I also put a hose on it with a punch in the end, just in case this gets bumped or turned on, you know, when gas starts pissing out because there's, I got a forced air gas furnace in here and the fumes would just go right down into here. That's why I don't like gas in my garage. Okay, uh, let me go down and find those clearances. Well, I was pretty close. This is an actual CB, Honda CB650 uh, factory manual online. And here's the clearances here. Intake 2 thou, exhaust 3 thou. I'm pretty sure that's what the old CB750s were, or 2 and 4 thou. So it's pretty close. So I'm just going to go check all of those right now. Maybe I got all tight valves, I don't know. Otherwise, that top end's got to come off. 
Okay, two thou on the intake, three thou on the exhaust. Now these, th this is a special tool <clears throat> for adjusting these, which I don't have. <clears throat> and what it is, it's like a, a socket, hollow, with the wrench welded on the side of it. So you can stick your screwdriver through the center. And I may have had one at one time. I'm sure we have it at the shop, I know, but uh, I don't have one. So first of all, I want to get it to top dead center. So th this is a little trickier. I'm going to look for the cam lobe. Like I'm not going to go by the marks. I'm going to look for the, 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 the bottom of the cam and then rock it to find the lowest point. It should be right about there. And let's see, which one was I looking at? That's the exhaust one, 3 thou. First, I'm going to see if I can get even a tooth out in there. I should have the long feeler gauges. Yeah, so I get I can get the tooth out in there. That's a good sign. Free thaw in there, but I am going to rock it a little bit here. Yeah, that's three thaw. <clears throat> you can't really feel the play, like usually you go click, 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 you know, but I don't feel any play. The engine's still warm, it's been sitting since I, last time it ran, probably an hour now. It's not that hot. Um, let's check the other side. Should be here by that. It's two thou. Yeah, two thou fits in there. That's good. You can't really feel the play, but I'm getting two thou in there. So this is the one I want to really check here with with no compression. What the hell's going on there? I'm gonna check the intake first. Got it in there. It's not too bad, I got it in there. Like if the if the exhaust is uh, stuck a little bit or bent, a bent valve, then there should be a lot of play here. Well, I'm obviously not getting that. And I'm getting the right clearance. I'm getting that in there too. There's three thou right there. <clears throat> so 
So, <laughs> uh, these heads gotta come off. This head. Now we're into a big job. <clears throat> I thought I'd just get this thing fired up running, dial in the carbs a little bit, and then start working on the, uh, the forks and the brakes. Brakes were seized, fork seals are done. Head gasket, I suspect, is leaking because it's wet around there. So I, I, I was kind of, if we can get it running good enough for now, I was going to see what we wanted to do with it. It needs tires. But if I pull this head off, and uh, I got to look at the rings, <laughs> pull the head, I'm going to pull the cylinders off, put a new base gasket on, look at the pistons, maybe the rings are stuck too. Uh, no compression number three and it, and that's it's got to be leaking around the valve seats i had 150 and 145 and number one cylinder when i first cranked this thing over dry and then it's just uh it's putting more oil and stuff into it it's just made it uh, worse so it's, i'm sure they're gummed up i'd love to clean them up but I got to see what the owner wants to do because now we're looking at, uh, I'm going to price out a carb kit, top end gasket kit, gasket and seals. And then he's looking at uh, hours. And that's not even touching the other stuff on this bike. Like how much money do you want to stick on a 1980 bike? I don't know. Let me look up the price of parts. I think I'm going to call it for this video for today. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> and uh, then the next video, I'll let you know what he decides he wants to do with this thing. Because now it's, it's starting to get pretty major now. Even those intake boots should be all replaced. They're pretty hard. They're hard as a rock. Okay, thanks for watching.